What if I told you that a single decision reversed my life's happiness by 23.2%? This was me. I was eating right, crushing my workouts, and making smart choices with my time. Then seemingly out of nowhere, I hit a wall. My motivation dwindled, I started to eat less healthy, my workouts lost a lot of their intensity, and I traded some of my good habits for not so good habits. I found myself asking what went wrong, the answer may seem too simple to be true, but there's actually a lot of research behind it. If you've had a similar experience in life, you're not alone. In fact, I would imagine most people go through something like this at some point in their life. But I found a way out. You see, back when I was crushing it, I had this practice I did every day. So in this video, I'm gonna break that down. First, we're gonna dive into the science behind why nature exposure is a powerful tool to reset the brain and experience more positivity in life. Then we're gonna examine how I measured this 23% increase in happiness from nature exposure and how you can too if you want to. Then finally, I'm gonna break down the specific steps I use to maximize the benefit I get from my simple nature exposure protocol. Before we go any further, I wanna preface this video with a few things. First of all, I'm not a scientist or a doctor. I'm just a guy that's sharing things that I find interesting and that have been helpful to me. Second of all, the things that I talk about in this video do have some immediate benefits, but they also take time and consistency to have a real impact in your life. All right, let's jump in. It's no secret that spending time in nature can have a profound effect on one's physical and mental health. While a lot of us are looking for the latest tech or meditation practice for our well being, geniuses like Beethoven and Steve Jobs found their edge in a simple and accessible way time in nature. Beethoven was known to spend hours alone walking in the woods. Steve Jobs preferred to have important meetings while walking. Even the king of content on YouTube, Mr. Beast, spends a portion of almost every day walking outside. And it turns out, these people are on to something. According to a study published in 2013, experiences in natural environments have been shown to affect the nervous system, leading to stress reduction and attention restoration. A 2014 report published by Stanford University found that walking significantly boosts creativity. On average, there was about a 60% increase in creative output when participants walked as compared to when they were sitting. The report went on to note that even after participants stopped walking and sat down, they experienced a residual boost in creativity. Now, there is tons of literature on this topic, but to keep this short, I'm only going to highlight one more study. This one was published in 2021 and asked the question, in which natural environments are people the happiest? Now, the study found that people reported being happier in natural environments as opposed to built environments. And the research pointed out that the most important factors for an outdoor environment to have if it was going to boost someone's happiness were that it was peaceful and provided some sort of fascination. So why does or why can't and time in nature have these positive effects? The short answer is we don't fully know. There are, however, a lot of theories on why this is the case. My favorite is the Kaplan Attention Restoration Theory, or ART. In short, the theory proposes that in built or non-natural environments, there is a constant barrage of things that are competing for our attention. The theory goes on to say that the capacity of our brain to focus on a specific stimuli or task is limited. So if you're spending time in an environment where the stimuli is constantly changing, you're likely to experience what's called directed attention fatigue. I don't know about you, but for me, it's really easy to hop on YouTube or X and spend 30 minutes to an hour just scrolling through short form content. As you scroll through that content, Content, you're constantly changing the stimuli that's in front of you. As you scroll through shorts, the environment in each short is different from the one before it and after it. So if attention restoration theory is right, this constant change in stimuli would lead to directed attention fatigue. I hear a lot of people talking about shrinking attention spans, so I tried to find some peer-reviewed research on that. It turns out that's hard to find because methods for measuring attention span vary quite a bit. But I think most people would agree that the fast-paced content that is so popular today probably probably isn't good for attention span. I found this great article on LinkedIn that sums things up really well. Social media platforms are designed to keep users engaged and scrolling for as long as possible because that's how they make money. Platforms capitalize on our tendency to seek novel stimuli, ultimately contributing to reduce attention spans. All right, back to attention restoration theory, which I'm just gonna call art from now on. Art proposes that spending time in nature encourages more effortless brain function, which allows the brain to recover and replenish its directed attention capacity. So essentially in natural environments, there's not this constant barrage of information coming at us. So our brains can slow down and take time to catch up. According to art, there are four components that a natural environment needs 
for it to be restorative. The first is it needs to be away. That is, it needs to provide a change of scenery or experience from everyday life. The second thing an environment needs is to provide soft fascination. This means that aspects of the environment should effortlessly capture your attention. The third thing is extent. The scope of the environment should feel big enough that you feel immersed in that environment. The fourth thing is compatibility. In order for someone to feel restored by an environment, they must want to be in that environment. If you're out in nature, but you don't want to be there and you're dreading every second of it, it's not going to be that restorative. So after learning about attention restoration theory and the positive effects of nature, I wanted to put this to the test. After doing a bit more research, I found this thing called PANAS, or the positive and negative effects schedule. This is a questionnaire that can be filled out to gauge if something is having a positive or negative effect on you. So I created a PANAS assessment as a spreadsheet that would auto-calculate my scores throughout the day. Now, the data that you get from a questionnaire like this is qualitative. You're self-reporting on how you feel. It's not something that can be empirically measured like your heart rate or your body temperature, but I think if you're honest with yourself when filling something out like this, it still has a lot of value. Initially, my idea was to track my baseline qualitative data three times a day using the positive and negative effect schedule, and then go and spend three days camping in nature and see if my mood or happiness increased. Now, for those of you that were like, I thought this was gonna be a simple, actionable protocol, not three days of camping. I don't have time to camp for three days every week. Don't worry, I'm getting to the simple, actionable protocol that you can use. This was just my first idea. Anyways, I tracked my baseline qualitative data for three days. And then a few days later, my two younger brothers and I left for a camping trip. The first day was pretty great. We set up our tents, chopped a bunch of firewood, and then built a dam in the freezing creek next to our camping spot. Where we were camping, we didn't have any cell service. And to be honest, that was just really refreshing. Then things started to take an interesting turn. We're sitting there just hanging out, cooking breakfast, maybe 8 a.m. And the wind starts to really pick up, like branches are falling, leaves are whipping off trees. Where we were camping, there were some other campsites and we started to notice that everybody else was leaving. And then it started to rain. The rain got harder and harder. And so we decided we didn't want to stick it out and be freezing cold for the next night. So we packed up and left. While we were out in nature, I brought a few copies of the positive and negative effects schedule that I've been filling out. And despite the bad weather, what I found was actually pretty interesting. Over the three days that I tracked my baseline, my average score was a 30.33 or as a percentage, a 60.67, which is pretty close to the statistical average. During the time I spent in nature, despite the rain and the cold, my pan my panas, my average panas score was 43.67 or as a percentage, 87.34. So in this case, I experienced 26.67% more positivity while in nature as compared to my baseline. Now, while that's pretty cool that spending an extended period of time in nature can do that, what if you don't have a day and a half to go camping? What if you only have 20 minutes? Well, remember at the beginning of the video where I talked about how I felt like I was crushing it and eating right and doing all the right things? Well, during that time, I had a specific practice that I did every single day. I would go on a hike every day that lasted anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. And during that hike, I did three specific things. Each hike started with breath work, then I moved on to gratitude, and finally, visualization. I wanted to use the positive and negative effect schedule to see how this practice impacted my happiness. So basically, I would fill out the positive and negative effect schedule before going on a walk, then I would go on my walk, do breath work, gratitude, visualization, and then come back, fill out the positive negative effect schedule right after doing that. And the results were pretty significant. Before we go into the results, let's talk a bit more about the specific protocol. So say that I'm going on a 20 minute walk in the woods. For the first five minutes of that walk, I would just focus on doing some really simple breath work. Maybe I breathe in for a count of four through my nose, then breathe out for a count of four through my mouth. And just do that for five minutes. By slowing down your breath like this, you're signaling the parasympathetic side of your autonomic nervous system or the rest and digest side of your nervous system that, hey, we can slow down, we can relax. There's no need to be all strung out and stressed. And after that five minutes of breath work, I would spend between five and 10 minutes thinking about what I'm grateful for. I try to start this gratitude practice by thinking about how thankful I am to be in the moment that I am. As I'm walking, I say to myself, you know what, there's nowhere I'd rather be than right here on this trail taking this walk right now. I'll go on to thinking about, wow, I'm really thankful that I'm not injured and that I can be walking. 
I'm thankful that I'm healthy. I'm thankful that I get to make YouTube videos. And I try to really feel a sense of gratitude for whatever it is that's coming to my mind. Then for the final five minutes of the walk, I visualize what it would feel like to have accomplished my goals. Now, maybe I'm the only one that struggles with this, but for me, it's really easy to set a goal and then let a few months go by and not really have done much towards achieving that goal. During that time when I felt like I was really crushing my goals, I spent at least five minutes every day thinking about two specific goals. And you know what? During that period, I made a lot of progress towards those. So for me, this practice of visualization is a way to consistently remind myself, hey, this is what you're working towards in life right now. Okay, so let's look at my positive and negative effect schedule data to see what my happiness looked like before going on a walk versus after going on the walk. The first time I did this, my positive effect score before going on the walk was 62%, and my after score was 86%. That's a change of 24% in only 20 minutes. Over the past five days, I've been using this positive and negative effect schedule to measure the impact that going on these walks has on me. And I found that after just 20 minutes of walking, on average, my happiness increases by 23.2%. If you give this a try, I'd love to hear about how it goes for you. If you have any ideas on ways that I can make my walk more beneficial, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this and got value from this, I would really appreciate it if you considered subscribing. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.